Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GameStar TV on this fine Thursday night. I believe it is hotter than, uh, what, what's it, hot enough to boil a monkey's bum in Australia at the moment? Well, let me tell you, it is four degrees here in Christchurch. How's that for a February uh, summertime temperature for you? We're bringing you the Paladin Summer 17 or hey pal tonight and it is week number three my name is crisis i'm going to be your host your caster and your producer for the evening so we're going to be doing a little bit more of a casual stream because it's all me at the moment excepting uh, for the admin duties and for those admin duties i'm joined by agro tank now agro tank he might say hello if you're nice hello. to him there you go he said hello <laughs> Uh, but he's not actually going to be casting tonight, so I'll let him off the hook and put him back on mute. Um, and that means, AgroTank, if you need to draw my attention to anything, you can just yell out and you can know that you won't go on stream. It's all good, because I'm the only one that's going through. Now, we are going to be progressing through the evening exactly as before in previous weeks, but if you're new to the Hey Pal, then let me explain exactly what is going to be happening. We'll have five rounds of a Swiss format bracket. We've got eight teams entering tonight, so that's pretty exciting. Enjoying the support from the community of our Swiss format Thursday night of fun and games. So we've seeded all the eight teams based on previous results and a little bit of intuition as well. Our first match of the evening is going to be Kings versus Forefront Paladins, and we've queued them up. An aggro tank, if you'd like to, you can tell them they can go ahead and start. Uh, so, uh, Kings versus Forefront. Now, we'll feature one match from each round of the Swiss format bracket. Uh, at the end of each round of Swiss, uh, after all the teams have entered in their results, we move on to the next round and we'll choose our next map. So, we'll have a little bit of time in between each of the rounds uh, to go through. No finals or anything like that, just five rounds of best of one uh, matches for the teams to practice their Paladins in because, of course, the serious business Paladins happens on Monday nights with uh, that, and that has been hosted by Cyber Gamer. And that, of course, is the OCE, um, what do they call it? Conference, the OCE Conference of the World Masters or whatever they are calling it, the official Paladins esports circuit so we are much more casual here on gamestar tv we're here for your fun and games we're here to have a little bit of fun expose everybody in the scene to everybody else in the scene essentially uh, you're guaranteed to you're, you're going to get five matches of best of ones and let's just make sure i'm cute to spectate yep so i'm ready to go and we are, uh, and we'll be into this first match. So, yep, five rounds of Swiss format coming up for you. Hopefully, short and sharp, as long as we don't have any technical hitches or anything like that. Uh, and a message to the teams, Agro Tank, if you'd like to give it to them, if they are unable to start their match ten minutes after we tell them to start the round, then uh, that match is going to be cancelled. So. Uh, whoever's been given the problems, no, nah, that's not true. We're, we're, we'll let them play. They've got to get their, their, their game in. It's not as serious business as, for example, qualifying for a $20,000 tournament, which is what we were doing on Tuesday nights. Um, but that's all finished now. So I'm ready to go. And not sure what's happening with the team. So we'll have a quick look at what's happening. There you go, joining now. All right, so just waiting for Forefront to get themselves into the lobby is the word in my ear from Super Admin Agrotank. And maybe what I'll do uh, while we're waiting for that to happen is pop up onto the screen for you, the leaderboard. Now, it's very, very small. So what I think I'll do is paste into... Oh, well, it's not actually that small, I suppose. You can, you can more or less see it. Zoom in. Uh, that is the, the Zowie leaderboard for Hey Pal Summer 17. Of course, we've had two weeks of play. In fact, I think I might be able to... Select a champion. Oh, hang on. We've got uh, Select the Champion going, so we're going to switch over to that right now, ladies and gentlemen, and get into this game. And 
let's just make sure we get some team names going for you so you know exactly who it is playing on what side. We've got Kings on the left-hand side and representing Kings, the captain, Myth93, Human Radio, Lord46, Struth Lord X, and X Paragon. So we'll just call him Paragon and Struth Lord, I guess, is what his name is. Struth Lord. Um, and that's a little bit of a little bit of a different lineup for the Kings. They've had one of their players banned out. A Mexican Gardner has been banned, and that's off the back of a Cyber Gamer ban of the same. Uh, we're not adjusting any of Kings' results, though, or Abyss's results. Last week, they used Mexican Gardner as a sub, uh, but the ban doesn't extend to those teams because we don't, we haven't seen evidence of Mexican Gardner cheating. Uh, in PayPal itself. So we're not going to apply a ban to the teams or remove points or anything like that. Uh, but he is not going to be able to play in Gamester tournaments. Moral of the story, story is don't cheat. So uh, that's the lineup for Kings. And on the forefront side, we've got Kakacho, Nightfall, Hato, uh, Divaz, and Flairton. And those of you who know the scene a little bit, We'll know that, of course, Kakacho and Flairton, until very recently, were actually on Kings. So this is going to be a little bit of a grudge, grudge match uh, coming through for you from these two teams. And hopefully it will be a nice and close match for our opener. Just one more pick to go uh, by Flairton. And if you're wondering why I'm not talking strategies, it's because I'm not really an expert at Paladins. I normally sit behind the buttons and push them and make make things happen behind the scenes, uh, run the Observer for the casters and let the casters cast up a storm. But EJ is traveling at the moment. Uh, Skimmy might join us later on this evening, but he was going to be working quite late tonight. Uh, that's the joys of working in retail in New Zealand. I don't know if it's like this in Australia, but in New Zealand we have late night shopping on Thursdays. So, um, you know, that means that if you work in retail, you're going to end up working late at night and that's exactly what the situation is for our man Skimmy, who is riding high from his Tuesday night cast. We had a fantastic time here on GameStay TV. If you haven't followed us, you should follow us, ladies and gentlemen, because we do lots of casting. We've been covering Heroes of the Storm and Paladins for this first season. Starting on the 21st of February, we're going to be bringing you Gears of War, and we are very, very close to making an announcement uh, about something else that we're going to be covering also from the console world. The only clue that I'll give you tonight is I just bought myself a PS4. So waiting for that to arrive, got it online, and we'll be covering some of the delightful games that come out and are exclusive to PS4. And there's your clue. Two clues, PS4 and it's exclusive. So we're loading in. Uh, we're starting off on Frozen Guard. There's something weird about the client that it always says we're on Enchanted Keep. Of course, we're never on Enchanted Keep. Uh, we're on Frozen Guard for our first map. And there you go. We've loaded into the map. And just waiting for the players to get their loadouts done. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but that's for talking. Just all right. So we got some word in Discord, ladies and gentlemen, and it's come through from the dulcet tones of Agro Tank, who's got his own YouTube channel actually, uh, and maybe he can put it into chat for what his YouTube channel is, and I'll pimp it out a bit. But everybody else has had their servers crashed. So every single <laughs> one of the other matches that are being played, uh, they've crashed out. So it's touch and go whether we're going to be able to get a game starting, but we're into the capture point spawning countdown for the first match. And I have a feeling that my Sustain. game is <laughs> So if you have just joined us, of course, we are on... Uh, We're on Frozen Guard, and it's the first match. We've got Kings versus Forefront Paladins. And it's the first match of Hey Pal Week 3. So hopefully we're going to have a goodie here on Frozen Guard. Five, Five seconds four, to go. Three, two, 
one. And Let the battle here we go. begin. Actually, I think. Lost the players. All right, so the main uh, battle going on on the outside at the moment. The first blood goes to the Kings. They have picked off the Androxus. So they're in a good spot right now to take control. Nobody's actually, well, there you go. A little bit of a, t a twinkle toes onto the point. And the Kings have established their dominance straight away. We've got a couple of players still up for the boys on, um, uh, on forefront. But really, at 42% already, uh, we've got things well in control for Kings. For some reason, though, they stepped off the point, and instead of getting it up to 50 before the counterattack came, uh, it went down. Uh, it just stuck at 43 for a little bit. Uh, flanking maneuver coming through from forefront, trying to get control of the situation, and they've done well. In fact, they managed to clear the Kings off and uh, capture the point for themselves, getting it up over the 30% mark. Uh, with two minutes past of a game time. And that was an, a very, very good retake. Here come the boys from Kings, though. They'll want to group up, get themselves in as well. They've got one push to do it in, 87% right now. And very good work from Forefront, getting the dismounts in, slowing down the counter attack. In comes Myth 93. He's gone all the way down. He's been cleared away. That's the first pick. Uh, and a reply that comes through for Forefront as well. But uh, really the snowball in favor of Forefront right now as they clear away the rest of the Kings and they capture the point. So after going down, first up, going down to the Kings. The Kings, I don't know, I, I think they responded poorly to the counter-attack from the boys on Forefront. That gave Forefront the opportunity to get themselves uh, into first position. So we'll shift over to Ruckus right now. Old Swoosh, Lord. And uh, well, they're on defense now. As, uh, well, let's go and see if anybody gets uh, taken down by the Gator Fury. I don't think, well, it must have been. I'm going to stay in first person. In first person right. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first time actually casting uh, on my own. So that's the only apology I'm going to make most of the time. I'll just keep it in third person mode. Unless there's specific requests for somebody. But of course that means that I won't be able to see exactly what's going on. Like here we go. We've got Androxus riding along. He's been left behind. Uh, and he's going to get himself boosted up. Gets himself dashed forward uh, off of his dismount. And pulls himself away wisely. Waiting for the rest of his team to group up with him. And they're going to have to try and break this defense under the archways uh, that the Kings have set up very, very well. There we go, Kakacho with the tank duties, gets his shield up, gets pushing through. The payload's actually past the archway, so they're going to be able to try and create a bit of space here. Get themselves pushed in. Mako goes down, but in goes Kakacho. Gets his ult, he pops it through. They're trying to break this defense once and for all. Get their snowball going, and I think it's actually going to work. And as I say, I think it's going to work. The push actually gets uh, stopped dead in its tracks. Lord 46 uh, gets the clear away. And he's the last man standing on this point there. So I think the boys from Forefront will have one more pass, uh, one more roll of the dice, really. As uh, the time starts counting down, we're uh, heading to the point where uh, they're going to have to force an overtime and see how far they can get it. I predict a successful defense, though, from the Kings. As in comes Kakacho. He's very, very, very weak. He doesn't have an ult. He used it on the previous push. So he goes in and uh, gets cleaned away, and the defense is successful. That's one point each to the Kings and the boys from forefront. Alrighty. So one point each. Five minutes of play. 
Point spawning in 15 seconds. And we're already going to be starting to talk about things like what if it goes to a three all after a push and an attack. So we know that the kings, uh, four, sorry, that forefront are three, able to capture the and stuff. So technically they have the advantage uh, in this kind of situation. Let's follow somebody. There you go. They have the advantage. So if they can keep capping, uh, they will win 4-3. That's the simple fact of the matter. So, oh, and Droxus gets himself grabbed. He manages to get out brilliantly, though, after laying down some DPS. He's got himself a pick. So it is one. Uh, it is a four on five situation in favor of Forefront right now. And in fact, Forefront get themselves onto the point start. Capping. Smooth law, though, pops the big guns uh, as the Ruckus to get things cleared out. Does a good job of it. And now the point ticking in his favor. 30%. And really, this is how things have gone the first time round. The difference, though, is the picks. The late picks are coming through. And uh, we had a situation. Forefront managed to have a player hiding away in this little corner for an absolute age while the rest of his team came into group. And that's not happened this time. That player's been picked now. So it's going to be an uneven fight again this time round, though. Uh, Kings keeping somebody on the point all the way through human radio as the Makara is sticking around there through the whole time and they've got the 99. Uh, the overtime now being forced at the moment as the forefront try desperately to get themselves onto this point, turn things around. Uh, but right now they're trickling in. It's desperation stakes. No, Struthlord is the last man standing. Why is the rest of his team not there? They've been pushed away, given an inch to the boys from forefront, and they're going to try and turn that inch into a mile. As uh, well, the, four, the, the overtime is ticking over there. Uh, what is uh, Divers doing? He's been pulled and taken away. And that is a cap in favor of the blue team, the Kings. Captain by Myth93. So three ultis in uh, in the... Uh, no, no, there's three players on uh, on fire. Just the one ulti uh, on Kings' side. So that's one cap each so far. Let's see if the defense of the boys from Forefront is going to be as good as King's defense was in the prior round. This will be the sticking point as they get into the archway area. This is the easiest place to defend, closest to the spawn of the boys uh, on defense Forefront. But uh, their defense has not actually been able, well it's not uh, sticking at all. Roll is on for Kings. So a complete turnaround from their previous uh, drop. I think it was just a, a, an error of judgment more than anything else that allowed Forefront to cap. Remember there was a good, I don't know, if it was 10 or 15, maybe 20 seconds when Kings were off the point and not capping it. And that just really gave the gap to the boys from Forefront. Here's the last desperate stakes happening. Let's try and get some uh, angle for you. The uh, last man standing, Divers, once again gets taken out. And the blue team pushes successfully. So all of a sudden, the table's very firmly turned in favor of Kings as they go 3-1 up after the second payload. Yeah, second payload. All right, heading into round uh, payload number three. I can't say round number three because we have Swiss rounds and we don't want to confuse anybody. And of course, it's a BO1, but with a four a four point result. Here on the Hey Pal, we count every point earned in the games towards the leaderboard score. So if you lose a game 4 3, it's actually not so bad. You only drop a point on the leaderboard as opposed to if you lose a game 4 0, where you lose. Um, well, four points on the leaderboard, essentially. On my trail. So this time the pick goes the way of uh, Kings Enemy. and Roxas gets Stop. taken down. In fact, Drogos has been taken down as well uh, with no deaths at all on behalf of the Kings. Makoa puts an end to the long range sniping that uh, we were following there. And 
78 percent this could actually be a perfect cap from the king oh in comes dive as pops his ulti clears away fernando oh sorry no it's not fernando clears away ruckus I think it was there. And uh, they're holding on with the skin of their teeth. Not a perfect cap. Carpenter's curse comes through to haunt me. And instead, it is uh, going to be, well, the uh, forefront uh, getting themselves up there. It's one third of the way. Let's see if they're going to be able to prevent a counterattack and prevent the grouping coming through. We've got Androxus uh, looking to cause a little bit of mayhem uh, in the uh, back. Right here come the boys from the Kings looking for the cap. Oh, they're trickling in though. We've got two picks, three picks going the way of the Kings. And they're actually going to cap this point and get themselves back into the game. It's now three and two with the payload marching. Now they have to cap this payload. Payload doesn't march, it's rolling. Uh, they have to cap this payload to force a three all tie and then golden point on the uh, on the last payload. So the question is whether they're going to be able to break the previously impenetrable defense of the boys from Kings. Mark Howard doing great work. That's Lord 46. I think his name is yeah, Lord 46. Doing great work with the hooks uh, and uh, trying to force the picks that come through. We've got all players up at the moment for the boys. Of uh, of forefront. Now yeah, they go in once again. Kakacho, the Fernando pops his ulti, gets the vulnerability going through. This time, have they broken it? Very good disengage initially from the boys of Kings, and in fact, the snowball stays in favour of the uh, of uh, forefront. Flatens and Roxas uh, pushes through, down, down to the back, doesn't get himself a pick. In fact, he does. Uh, in the end, there as he exits. Uh, the danger zone picks up the Makoa, but it is not enough because the picks have come through in reply from the Kings. And with a minute and 15 seconds remaining, they are getting an opportunity to set up their defense. Thanks for the heals. A little bit of a quiet moment as the forefront paladins try to get themselves grouped up. And at this point, less than a minute remaining. And they're going to have one push, and then that's it. They're going to have to get their snowball going after that. Lord 46 is popping his uh, turtle shell up there, whatever his shield is. Uh, and uh, is soaking some of the damage there. Great shot, though, from Dogo. Getting the knockback through. And uh, now the push is on. A hook onto Kakacho. That's not the worst. A uh, player to get hooked if you're on forefront gets himself in range of the payload, but it's not moving. He's been taken down, soaks up a huge amount of damage, but his back line was collapsing at the same time. And with 15 seconds to go, I think that this is going to be a victory for the Kings with a new lineup into week three. Really? Even though you get a point on defenses. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, I forgot you couldn't hear aggro tank. So uh, what I need to say is um, I have been reminded by the wide words in my ear of aggro tank that you can't win on a defense. So you actually have to cap the payload. So there you go. Learn something new. Point so it is three, two, seconds. not the worst defense to lose then. Uh, or the, the, the worst attack to lose if you're on forefront. They could just keep capping, I guess, uh, if they can't break Five, this defense. Four, of course, they three, don't want to have to go through two, the stress of having to one. keep capping. So here we go. Into payload number four. Yeah, payload number four. So we'll stick with Ruckus for a little bit as he tries to get some damage on down over the side. He's uh, popped his ulti. Uh, and then gets taken down, just like that. So uh, didn't get his full ulti off. Uh, so the boys from uh, Forefront will be pleased that they managed to get that right. And in fact, it was their little flanking maneuver that uh, caught the Kings off guard completely. And they are now capping the points. So one fifth all the way, one quarter, almost a third now. And looking for the dismounts. 
to prevent the grouping up. And in fact, they don't have a, a huge amount to worry about because even though they didn't get the dismounts that are coming through, this is a trickle, if I ever saw one, from the Kings. A little bit of desperate strikes coming through. Just one player from the Kings onto the point, and he is surrounded. Well, there was, there, there was uh, a second player there for a moment, but uh, the counter captures coming through. 75% is where the bar stopped for the forefront. And now the Kings looking to get themselves back. But unfortunately for them, Forefront doing very, very well. Bit of a carry going through at the moment from the Androxus. That's Flairton. So we'll stick with him for a moment. He's Over on fire. Time. So is the Ying. Uh, but she's just a healer, you know. So, you know, probably not killing him. Not Stop as exciting to watch as Androxus. As they the capture payload. the payload and Forefront get their roll on. So they've evened up the scores now. They could either win or force a golden point. A point capture, payload from capture. Uh, in, in the next payload run. Alright, who's going to get the first pick as we stick with Androxus for a little bit? Oh, he's been hooked! <laughs> the pick which uh, taken by Lord46 on the Makoa, and that is the signal for all of Kings to push forward under the archway and look to force a trickle, uh, a trickle spawn, shall we call it. Uh, from forefront, and they've done that very, very successfully. Myth 94, uh, sorry, Myth 93 has pushed all the way through back to the point. He is on the hunt, looking to get himself um, an Androxus, I would say. That's what he wants. So they wisely pull back now, but uh, the payload thrown all the way through. The Dragon's Fury comes through from Dogos, takes out the Makoa. That is a, oh, sorry, the Madumba. Madumba? Yeah, Makoa? What the hell is the guy's name? <laughs> it's not Makoa, it's Moldumba. Yeah, it's the healer. So the healer got taken out. That's the pick that you want to get. Uh, it hasn't had the effect uh, that they would like, which is to break the hold. And the answer to that question is no. So the hold's still secure at the moment, and unfortunately, Kings trickling in. But you know what? If I was the Kings, I wouldn't be too worried about this defense. We know that the Kings. Uh, sorry, if I was forefront, I wouldn't be too worried. We know that Kings have a great defense uh, on the payload, but three times out of four, the boys from forefront have captured the, kept the point. So they'll be feeling confident if they go to a sudden death round. Uh, that's it, they've got the roll on now, and they've gotten the payload further than they have before any of the previous rounds. This is going to be tough that comes through. We've got uh, two ultis, and Boxus has his ulti. But he's cycling, oh, sorry, cycling through. He's uh, riding through. Uh, doesn't quite have it yet. Uh, get, get there yet. Is he going to be able to get it through? Pops up into the sky, gets a pick. He's got a double, in fact, on his push. He's looking for his third. He hasn't used his ult yet, so he saved it. And victory to Forefront, coming from behind. With an excellent play there, and rewarded by the positive play rewards uh, put in place by uh, high res making sure that you can only win on an attack. And that's really played into Forefront's hands. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are the points up in front of you. Let's have a look at who got highest eliminations. Paragon uh, did very, very well uh, with his highest eliminations. In terms of the MVP, I don't know who to pick. I think this is going to be not... We don't normally do this sort of thing, but I am going to pick Lord46 um, as the MVP uh, in this... Uh, in this round, even though he was on the losing side, his hooks, uh, his picks were absolutely crucial. Uh, and he dominated from the front there. So uh, the MVP, oh, I should have clicked my MVP button. Hang on. Here we go. MVP button. There you go. So the MVP is going to go to Lord46. He was on the losing side, and really he was the one that kept his team uh, in play for as long as he did. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a quick break. So uh, please stick around. Don't go away uh, as we wait for the other results to come through and the next round to get ready. Should be about five minutes. I think, in fact, most of the results have come through. So we'll be able to generate the next round in just a minute. So 
We will be right back uh, in just a moment.